When Jesus was willing to pay the price, he was thinking beyond himself. If we are going to have the love of God, we must think beyond ourselves. We must allow that love to possess us and to move us outside of our own circumstance and situation. This morning, we're here because this is a, a special weekend. We're here always to worship the Lord, first and foremost. But we know it's a, a special weekend because of the fact that it's Memorial Day weekend. And this is a time when we commemorate uh, the sacrificial uh, lives given up for uh, our, our freedom. And perhaps you may not know this, but actually Memorial Day, prior to becoming Memorial Day, was known as Decorations Day. For it was a time when uh, people would go to, to the gravesides, especially after, after the Civil War, and they would take flowers to remember and honor their loved ones who died in battle, both on the Confederate side as well as on the Union side. And we know that as the time progressed, uh, this practice uh, continued and grew. And we know that as Decorations Day, as it was called, was experienced at different times at different places, over the course of time, there became a desire to have it under one day. And eventually, it would uh, uh, come to be the uh, 30th of, of, uh, of May. Later, it would be changed to make it a three-day weekend, and it was in 19, I believe, 70 or 71 that it was put into practice that the last Monday of May would be the day for Memorial Day, and that's where it is today. Uh, we know that this is occasion to remember all of those who have died in battle. Perhaps one statistic you may not know is that um, over a million three hundred and nineteen thousand American soldiers have died in 30 different conflicts since the Revolutionary War. We know that this is why we celebrate Memorial Day and that we honor those who have given their lives for the cause of freedom at many times over the course of many years. And we want to thank God for their sacrifice. But we also know that Jesus would give us some words about sacrifice that are quite appropriate. And that's what I would like for us to focus our attention on today as I've entitled the message, Love's Greatest Expression. So as we prepare to read from John's Gospel, chapter 15, verses 12 and 13, let us do so prayerfully. Father, we do thank you, for you truly are an awesome God. And we thank you, Lord, for the many brave men and women who have given their lives for the cause of freedom. We thank you, Lord, for the tremendous sacrifice they made that we might enjoy the, the kind of life we have here in America. And we do pray that you will help us to always remember what they have done for us. And guide us, Lord, to also know that what causes us to want to make that kind of sacrifice, that comes from you. We pray, Lord, that you will guide us this morning as we reflect upon your word of truth, that it will come alive in our hearts and our minds, that if called upon to, we can also demonstrate, express love in the greatest of ways. And I thank you, for I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we read from 
from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, these words of our Lord Jesus, where he said, My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. This kind of sacrificial love is a love that we need to understand more about. We know that, that the greatest love is expressed in sacrifice. As Jesus put it here, that sacrifice was showing oneself, giving oneself up for the, for the sake of someone else. And here, Jesus is saying that this is, is love at its greatest. This is the epitome of agape love. To be able to make that kind of sacrifice. We know that that was the kind of sacrifice Jesus made for us. When he went to a cross, he was going to a cross sacrificially. He was going in our place for our sin. You see, that's what a sacrifice is all about in its highest level, is to give up. But to give up one's life requires a great, great sacrifice. Well, we know that the Lord Jesus had that kind of sacrificial love. As he went to the cross, as he was willing to give up himself, so completely in every way. I mean, he did pray that the cup pass from him. We know that it wasn't his desire necessarily to go through that pain and suffering for us. I don't think it's really anyone's intent to want to go through pain and suffering. But when we see how others were going to be affected, we see that Jesus was willing to give up his life, that we might have life. And that's what these brave men and women have done, who've given their lives. They were willing to pay that ultimate price for a cause. Someone has said, unless you have something to die for, you don't have anything to live for. When we have something to die for, and we're willing to pay that price, then we've discovered a great joy. Because we know when Jesus spoke these words, in verse 11, he said this, I have told you this, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. You see, our joy in life is not governed by how long we live, but how we live. Our joy in life is knowing that God loves us, that he was willing to pay that sacrifice, giving up his son, Jesus, paying that price for your sins and for mine, that, that we have the opportunity to enter into that joy as we too give ourselves to him. Now, there's something else about this kind of, of love, this kind of love that expressed in the greatest way in sacrificial, sacrificially, but it also comes out of a heart of, of selflessness. It requires a selfless attitude. And here we see in this text how Jesus had that kind of, of, of selfless attitude. That he was thinking more about others, thinking about us, thinking about mankind, thinking about the sins of, of the whole world. And that's why Jesus would submit to the will of the Father. He would give himself up because he had a selfless intent. He was desiring to help us. He was desiring to give himself up for us. So his, his mindset 
was one of a selfless spirit, a selfless attitude. And, and so we need to understand that when Jesus was willing to pay the price, he was thinking beyond himself. If we are going to have the love of God, we must think beyond ourselves. We must allow that love to possess us and to move us outside of our own circumstance and situation. That we want to enter into the world of others and thinking about how we can help and how we can make a difference in the lives of, of other people. And, and this is love at its greatest when it is a sacrificial love and it's motivated by a selfless attitude. And certainly, Jesus had that kind of attitude. And if we're going to have that type of love, we must have God in our hearts. Because you see, God is love. God is agape. How can we have that kind of love without having God in our heart? God is the one who provides us a vision of being willing to, to do whatever is required of us to help others, to respond to the needs of others, to give ourselves to others when that re is required of us. I'm reminded of a story just happened yesterday in Portland, Oregon. Perhaps you saw it in the news, where a soldier and a man who had graduated from college, uh, two men uh, went to the aid of some uh, Muslim women who were, were being ridiculed and, and harassed by a very outspoken man. And as they went to their assistance, the man pulled a knife and stabbed them. One of them died. We know that greater love has no one that this, that a man be willing to stand up, to do what is right, to pay the price, to help somebody in need. These two men did not know these women. They did not have any other reason to do this other than to give themselves for a need, a cause. We don't know when that kind of situation may present itself to us. But we need to have the motivation of love that we too would be willing to pay the price. That's what's required of every soldier that goes into the field of battle. Because we know, they know they're taking great risk. And they know the ultimate price may have to be paid by them. So, sacrificial love and unselfish love. But also, it requires a serving heart. To have love's greatest expression is to have a servant's heart. A servant's heart is, is one that is reaching out to others in need, responding whenever they can. Reaching out and helping others is what Jesus was all about. In Matthew 20, verse 28, Jesus said, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. You see, service can lead to sacrifice and as well. And we know that when we serve others, that's why we refer to the arm services. Because these two are men and women who want to serve. And serving the country is serving us. Serving the country is serving others to protect our rights and our freedoms. So greater love has no one than this. Than a man lay down his life for his friends. It requires a sacrifice. It requires selflessness. It requires a servant's heart that will reach out and give to help others. And that is what our Lord Jesus did for each and every one of us. 
And if we are going to have that kind of, that kind of mindset, that kind of spirit to want to, to reach out, to give, to give up, to help, to respond to needs, we too must come into a personal relationship with, with God. And that happens as we open our hearts up to him, as we receive him as our personal Lord and Savior. Only Jesus can change your heart from the inside out. Only Jesus can give us that kind of, of, of renovation, that kind of renewal, that kind of understanding of life, that we can have life in its fullness. You see, Jesus came that we have a full life, not just eternal life in the year after, but he also, he came that we might have an abundant life, a life that's full and rich with meaning and purpose, that we're going somewhere, that our life has direction to it, that we're not going in, in circles, but that we're headed somewhere, that we're going to be with Jesus. And in the process of going to be with him in his glory, he wants us to fulfill a purpose in our life. And there's no greater purpose than making a sacrifice, than being selfless and having a servant spirit. This is what our Lord Jesus was all about. This is at the very heart of God. For we know that God so loved the world. That's you, me, everybody. That he gave up his only begotten son. And that whoever, whosoever, any of us who would believe in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus is the one and only one who can give us this kind of love. For he is love. And he wants us to love as he first loved us. May we pray.